Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor tutorials, a new one every week. And this week we are doing the beach shore. Fun project. Um, we have Keenan who's working our cameras. Yes. He's also holding my baby. Yes. So look, you might really, hear him humming. Really excited. <laughs> Keenan really likes babies and he likes to hum to babies. It's like <laughs> I sing them to sleep. So he's putting Arlo to sleep while I film. So Keenan, thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, we are using two paintbrushes today, a round six and a round two. These are great paintbrushes. Um, there are Let's Make Art Classic. If you have the Princeton Heritage Series, that's a great brush. You can use that as well. Basically, just use what you have. Um, we are going to be doing this project in six steps. So our very first step, we are going to um, paint the beach. We're going to like sketch the line, but I didn't think that would be a full step. And then paint the beach is step one. Step two, we're going to do this foam water part. Step three, we're going to do the blue water part. Step four, we're going to go back into this uh, foam area and put in white foam. Step five, we're going to do some shadows, a little bit of shadows on the beach and in the water. And um, step six, just any last minute details that we want to add to this painting. We are using four colors. So our first color is sea blue. Our second color is violet. And you can see here my palette's already dirty. I'm just reusing a palette from the last project I painted because sometimes you don't have to wash your palette in between paintings if you're using the same colors, you know? Nice. These colors reconstitute, so it's nice just to keep using them. Third color is sepia. It's a really warm brown. It's lovely. And our last color is bleed proof white which I'm not going to swatch. Okay, now usually I go over warm-ups, but I was talking to Keenan and I realized that we have a beginner series where I kind of cover all of the things that we talk about in warm-ups, brush strokes, values, how to hold a paintbrush, all of that good stuff. So we thought what we would try is just to direct you guys to the beginner series on our YouTube channel um, and see if that works okay for you. If you miss the beginner, like the warm-ups that we do and they're really helpful for you, comment and let us know and I'll keep on doing them. But sometimes I'm like, they could just go watch this if they need it. And if they don't need it, then it saves us probably about five minutes. So. Yeah. Just let us know what you guys would prefer. I'm happy to do whatever you would need. Um, let's do our oath. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. How's he doing? He's out. He's out? Oh, I knew he would be. Just needed to wrap him up. Okay, so our very first step is we're just going to kind of put in our uh, shoreline where the water is hitting the beach. Now, this is just a wave, like a curved line, so you guys can make it as curvy as you want. Again, nature, there's like always a wave that's gonna be that shape, so like don't stress. Um, I'm just gonna do it probably about two thirds of the way down is where I'm gonna start mine. I'm going to have it kind of come out and then go back in and it's not like I kind of did a wave like within there. It's not like diagonal lines, you know, you guys get water. <laughs> I don't need to explain that further. Okay. So now I'm going to start by putting in my beach. So I'm going to grab my round six and I'm going to grab my sepia. and I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna put in my darkest value, so I'm gonna pick up paint and put the color down by this line first, and then I'm just going to rinse my brush and spread the color out, because I want the darkest value to be here at the water edge. And the reason why is because the water itself is casting a shadow onto the beach. And you're probably gonna have to do a couple layers to get the full, to get like the kind of dark value you want as well as 
um, have it be dark all the way through. Now, if you are a subscriber um, and you want like more of a yellow color with your with your um, beach line, is you could just drop a little bit of lemon yellow in there because you have a bottle of that. So I'm just kind of working kind of quickly. I'm gonna get blooms in here. Blooms are just kind of like hard edges and I'm okay with that. If you wanna to tone down the redness of this and you don't have yellow, drop in a tiny, tiny bit of sea blue and it's gonna give you a more neutral brown. You see that brown compared to this one? Totally. So it just depends on what kind of brown you want. I feel like depending on where you are, like where the body of water is, the time of day, it will kind of change. Because there are beaches that have different colors, you know what I mean? You ever seen a bioluminescent beach? Yes. I have not, but I've been told they're really cool. They are really cool. And I feel like one time I went to this science thing. It wasn't Alliance Redwoods. It was a different one. Sounds, it sounds cool. And there are these little bugs that um, when they move, they light up. Oh. So you're at the beach. We go to the beach at night and you dig really fast in the sand and then all of these things light up. And then you see it in the water. You see those bugs in the, I don't, I don't, I don't think bugs is the right term, but I don't know what term it is. But there is something and they light up when they're, when they move. And it's pretty. And it's super pretty. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm doing section by section. If I were to go along and just do like that shoreline and blend it out, um, it would probably not blend out very well because it would have taken too long to dry. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Mix in a little bit of my sea blue in there to tone down the red. But if you want that more ready red color for your sand, there's nothing wrong with that. This is your painting. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually like stand up the paper a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to get this nice and wet. So I'm not, I'm making sure my brush is kind of soaked. And then I'm going to take my brown and drop it in. Okay. And then I'm going to stand up my board. And kind of, can they see that on the front? Yes. Kind of give it the feeling as if it's like dripping a little bit, which sometimes depending on how that water is hitting that sand, water makes the sand move back and forth, you know, that first layer. Totally. So it kind of gives you that feeling of it pushing, like moving back and forth. You see what I'm saying? Yep. I really like how that turned out on that side. I'm gonna do it on the other side too. And if you drop it in like this, and if it doesn't move right away, don't stress, just grab some water, touch kind of like the bottom of where you want it to go. Just say, come on, little fella, move down for me. Spread your wings and fly, you know? <laughs> I just love that, that look right there. Oh, it's good. It's real good. Also, you can see I have a pretty harsh drip that happened here right in the middle. You could either leave that or you could just blend it out. I don't mind leaving things like that because also sand is uneven where like maybe that's a more of a hole where that sand kind of goes in. I personally, though, am going to blend that out only because it's in the very center of my painting and it's kind of making an implied line. And I don't uh, want the composition to be thrown off because of that. So if you really like that, then I would suggest maybe trying to replicate that in other areas so it's not splitting your painting in half like mine is. So I'm just going to blend it side to side so it's not so strong. 
And I just feel like this needs a little bit more color. So I'm just gonna do another wash. And you could also do it the other way where if you lay it down, put it this way. Oh, I like that. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? And you're just gonna get some really fun textures and lines, but sand is one of those things that you can play with that and you're still gonna read what's going on. So kind of put it up and down and see what happens. Okay, gosh, that I really loved how that turned out. How fun. Okay, that's step one. Step two, I want you to think of this painting as in three sections. So we have the sand part, we have the part where like the thin foamy water overlaps the sand, and then we have like straight water up here. So we did the first part, now we're gonna think of this second chunk right here. So I'm gonna take some of that same brown, make sure I, uh, you add water to it so it's a lighter value, and then I just kinda want you to make random marks about just in the center of this painting right here. And what we're trying to show here is that when this water comes up, it's overlapping the sand and some areas of the water, since it's clear, you would see that sand through it. The reason why we're not painting a solid line is because one, the glare would actually leave white reflections and we wanna leave space for the white foam. Now the nice thing about having bleed proof white in this project is if you don't leave enough white space, it's not a big deal um, because you could just paint over it in white. But it's just good practice to try and like leave the areas white instead of just relying on bleed proof white. And yes, this is gonna look funky. Um, what I would try and caution you guys to do, and I'm, I'm noticing it right here, is my brush strokes are very similar and I'm picking up, visually I'm seeing a pattern of how thick they are and length. So I'm gonna mess that up. Our brain does that automatically without knowing um, when we're creating and the viewers also will pick up on that. So like do small areas. You can also play with the value. Try not to keep it too dark because we'll go back in and put in darker values. And also I'm not doing it close to this white edge. I mean, I did it kind of close, but I'm not going up all the way to that line because I want that edge to be pure foam, just a white foamy edge. Okay, that was step two. Now we're gonna put in our blue water. So with sea blue, we have this really gorgeous like turquoisey blue, um, which I'm going to use. But if you want it to be more of a true blue, mix a little bit of violet in there. Um, I'm gonna do both. My first layer is gonna be more of this sea, just the sea blue. But just so you guys know, if that color is just too turquoisey for you, you can mix it with some violet. Okay. So I'm picking up some sea blue. I'm going across the top. And this is also, I'm gonna do that same technique where I'm just gonna lay the color down at the top. Try and work quickly. And if you can, or if you want to, you can lift your, paint, your paper up again and let the colors kind of drip. You'll also notice that I'm lifting up my brush. Like here I have some white spots. I'm gonna leave that. I really like leaving things like that while I'm painting because maybe that's a glare or maybe that's a white wave that I decided to add. Um, it leaves you open for options. And then the worst thing that can happen if you don't like it is you just cover it up. So that's why I don't try to cover things up all the way right away because it gives me options of what to do. So I'm just gonna drop it in, drop, and then you can stand this up.
And then if you want to do it the other way, do it the other way and let that sink. There's just a lot of fun to be had, pretty much. I just love. I know. Like, look how gorgeous that sand turned out. Well, right now just, I'm seeing it as the sky and a mountain. Oh, I could see that. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Okay. So. What is that board you're taped to? I think this is a watercolor board, but I'm not sure. Oh. I just needed something hard to tape my paper to. <laughs> and I found this in the back and I'm like, I think that'll work. It's perfect. I think you can paint on this. Really? Yeah. It's like a, I don't know what it is. I'll stop asking questions. I'm going to discover, I'm going to explore it though after and figure it out. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay, the other thing that I just want to bring your guys' attention to really quick is where this brown is. You want to overlap, have the blue overlap it a little bit, but don't go too crazy um, because you can start mixing different colors in there on accident by overlapping them so much. Like you can see here on my reference photo that I have some pretty strong green going on in the middle from overlapping. It doesn't look bad, but I just, um, I, I want you guys to be aware of that as because watercolor is transparent when you're putting colors on top of other colors, they sometimes make colors that you're not expecting. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to repeat, I'm gonna just do a couple more layers of this blue. Um, so it feels a little bit more full. I'm gonna do one more layer of this sea blue and then I'm gonna add some violet. Now, if you have a larger paintbrush than around six, this is a great time to use it. I'm gonna just stick with my six, but if you have like washes um, or larger rounds, that would be good too. Okay. Man, those colors are beautiful. Now, you'll, you guys are probably seeing that my paper is starting to buckle a little bit. That's normal, just the amount of water that we're using across this entire painting, it's buckling, but I taped it down with painter's tape, so it's still staying put. Okay, now I'm gonna mix a little bit of violet into my blue. And depending on how, what kind of blue, we'll show you how much violet to use. So I don't want a purple blue. I still want a pretty blue blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a true blue? Yeah, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of violet. And again, I'm being fairly quick and kind of messy with this. And then I'm going to pick up my board. And now I'm gonna start blending out the areas that seem a little bit too, like there's too much of a line. Like here, that's not a super smooth transition. So I'm gonna kind of help it transition out. When I see that it's dripping too far in one direction, that's when I'll kind of do it the other way too. Cause you see how there was a couple that were like dripping yeah. straight down, which isn't totally bad, but I just don't want it to like actually drip through to my um, water edge. There we go. Now that feels a little bit like a smoother transition. Yes. And now this area, I don't know if it's helping me before, like it was. Like, um, it's now distracting me. 
the white? The white part at the top. I don't think it's as, it's not, I don't see it turning into a wave at this point. So I'm just gonna cover it. If you want to turn it into a wave, you can. Um, but for me, I'm like, you know what? It was it's nice. Just because of the shape? I think it was too close to the painter's tape. I think if I left it maybe more out, like put it more out here, then it would have worked as a wave, but it, there wasn't enough room to let me define it enough so that you could easily tell what's going on. Makes so I'm just gonna cover it, no big deal. And this is why I kinda like leaving things out, cause it just gives me options to play. And then I can decide, yeah, that worked out, or no, that didn't work out, I'm just gonna cover it. And then this is kind of the time where if you want to put in another movement of water, like here I kind of have like a second wave coming up behind. It's not as strong as the first one, it's a softer one. Um, you can put that in now. So I'm just gonna go in, I picked up some blue. I'm gonna put it in, okay? And then what I'm gonna do after I put it in, similar to what I do the sand, I'm gonna blend it. blend it out because this is a soft hint of a wave it's not a full one and what I mean by that is you know how some waves are taller as they come in we can tell the height of a wave or how like heavy it is when you're painting by the amount of white and shadow that is left so I want this first one to feel heavy with foam. So it's nice and white on the edge and then I wanna make sure it's nice and shadowed underneath. Because depending on how tall it is, that will inform how much of a shadow it leaves behind. This one is just like a soft, like, like a thin one, not as tall. So it has a little bit, I haven't put it in yet, but it has a little bit of a white border and then a little bit of a shadow, but not nearly the amount of value that's happening on this first one. So if you want your waves to, if you want like this back one to feel just as heavy as this one, you need to have a stronger shadow underneath and a bigger white area for like the glare, the highlight, the foam. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. But for me, I just wanna do a hint. So that's why I put my color down and blended it out and then I'll add water back to it in a little bit. And again, just do as many layers as you want to. There, it's not gonna be like, mine's not perfectly smooth because I'm going in at different like drying times and adding stuff, so that's how I'm getting the blooms. But you know me, I love blooms, so I'm okay with it. Blooms are good. They're just, like look at this bloom that happened right here on this beach shore. I love that. It's so beautiful. I'm just assuming that it used to be like a sand castle. Yeah. And it got destroyed. Yes. <laughs> or like a crack in the sand or something. Yeah. And if you want this to feel a little bit stronger, I'm going to do another wash here. Again, making sure I kind of blend it out. If you want this darker up here, you could do a little bit more of a purple blue up here that's going to darken that value. And how we communicate space and something is value change, right? So I am overlapping my brown just a little bit because we want to make it clear like the brown is underneath. We still want this to feel like one painting even though we're doing it in different sections. And sometimes I feel like if an area is just getting too bloomy, like too many hard edges, I'll just take a damp brush and kind of just blend out everything. Like just go over it with the damp brush back and forth. Now sometimes this does create new blooms because we're adding water to an already dry surface, so they're gonna have separate drying times. But 
for me, usually the blooms are like on the edges of stuff and not in the middle, so it's not as obvious. I just realized that I dropped blue paint on the middle of this reference photo, so I'm gonna wipe it up. Oh, oh that is stuck on there. Well, just so you guys know, that's not usually there. It's fine. Who knows when that <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So that was step three. Now we're going to move on to step four, and this is where we're going to bust out our bleed proof white. Okay, so bleed proof white is thicker. It's not the same consistency of liquid watercolor. Um, it also reconstitutes. So if it's dry, just grab a little bit of water and pick up some white paint. And you're going to, you're going to have to kind of mess with how much water to pick up to get the right consistency. So basically I dampen my brush, I get it wet and then I hit it off the side of my cup and then I put it in. If you put too much water in with your bleed proof white and you try and paint with it, it won't be opaque. <clears throat> You'll be able to see the color underneath. So depending on the thickness of how you want this depends on how much water you add. So I have some white and now I'm gonna kinda like go through, I'm gonna cover this cause I accidentally painted over my edge and you might also have to do a couple of layers. But this is why Bleed Proof White is so wonderful is if you like accidentally messed up, you're like, oh, let me just cover that really quick. And nobody will even know it happened. The painter's white out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of go through and I have some white areas left from when I put down this like the weird marks on my shore. And I'm gonna go in and like kind of start painting around those. Now the nice thing about foam is it's kind of random. So you kind of just have to have marks here and there. You can kind of play with the thickness, you can play with the texture. But again, I just wanna caution you guys, look at the marks you're making Make sure that they're varied, because if they are too much alike, um, the people looking at your painting are gonna easily be able to pick up on that. And sometimes that distracts us from the painting. Like, we don't want people to notice the pattern in the foam, we want them to notice that this is a beach shore. And you can paint over some of the brown areas if you want. And then I'm also going to take, if your blue is dry enough, I'm gonna do some over my blue too. To kind of like connect these different areas that we're painting. And then, on this wave right here, where I kind of wanted it to feel like a soft wave, I'm gonna put in some white. Now, as you can see that it's not like leaving a super smooth edge, which I'm actually okay about, but if it's too rough for you and it's not spreading, you need to make your brush a little bit more damp. I also am lifting up my brush on this white foam part. It's not the same thickness, strong, thick line, um, because water also has um, different depths when you're looking down on it. You know what I mean? Because the beach is going down. So or it's, are you just saying the surface of the water? The surface, the surface of the water is not completely smooth and flat, right? It has waves. So. I'm not going to do a perfectly smooth, white, thick line because that's not how the sun would glare on it. That's not true to the thickness of the little wave coming in because it's gonna have variation. So some of it is gonna be a little bit thinner. And then I kind of like blend it out a little bit. And again, if you gotta do a couple layers of this white, you can. Maybe you do the white and then you're like, okay, I know I need to put in 
I know I need to put in a little bit of a darker shadow on that to like help define it just a little bit more. kind of overlapping this blue area a little bit. <clears throat> also, this is one of those paintings where if you're able to take a minute and step back from it and look at it from far away, super helpful. It's really, <laughs> I can't do that while I'm teaching you, but <laughs> if I were painting this at home, I mean, I do that with pretty much every painting, but especially this one. Um, I would take a step back and be like, okay, what do my highlights look like? Or, you know, how does this feel from far away? What areas can I improve on? Okay, so put your bleed proof white aside. We're going to go back in and we're going to do step five. We're going to put in a little bit stronger shadows, values on this foam part with the brown. So I'm going to take some of my brown. And here and there, I'm just gonna touch in a little bit of darker values. There's not really rhyme or reason to it. They're more random. And then I'm gonna blend them out a little bit. So then it's not like just like black or dark polka dots on my shore. And this is just to convey a little bit more depth and form. Make, the, make this feel just a little bit more three-dimensional. And even though we're doing random lines, again, pay attention to the patterns that you're making, the length of them, how far apart they are. But you see how already this kind of makes this area pop more with that little darker value than over mm -hmm. here. This was kind of looking flat. And how foam disperses across the water is also different. Like there are some where it's, it kind of just sits more on the top. There are some where it's really pushed by the current of the water. Um, I mean, there's so many different bodies of water. Maybe I should have done research of like, this would be more like a tropical beach as opposed to a northern California coast beach. You know what I mean? No, there are Midwest beaches, and this is kind of looking like a Midwest beach. Is, is there? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there's got to be. I've never been to like... A lake or a pond? Yeah. Nearby? Yeah, no. Hmm. The ponds are mostly mud beaches. Yeah, this can't be a pond. No. No, this no. This is too blue. This is too blue to be a Midwest It's like beach. if this was brown... <laughs> Then it could be totally. like a pond on my property. <laughs> yes. So true. And I'm going to drop a little bit of the more reddish brown in there. Just because this brown was just looking a little, I don't know, too neutral. Mm. I, I don't know how to say. I just wanted a little bit more color in there. But again, don't worry if you go crazy with this part because we have bleed proof white. So maybe you go in to put in your, your values and then you're like, oh shoot, I lost my white part. Well, that's all right. You got some white paint that you can put on top of it, which I'm probably gonna have to do on this because I'm messing with it too much. And for me, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm totally convinced yet about the the brown part underneath my painting. So I'm gonna go in, and I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I'm just um, living on the edge here. That is a throwback <laughs> phrase. I know, I haven't used it in so long. But I want there to be, especially in this light value where this blue is so light, I need there to be a little bit more brown underneath. So I'm just going to take a tiny bit of brown and paint on top. You might not need this. Yours could be good to go, but I feel like the transition wasn't as smooth as I would have liked. 
as in it kind of just felt like it was blue and then it stopped and then it was brown mm -hmm. and then it stopped. I wanted there, because that's not how it would be true, it would be a smoother thing like on a beach. It's almost like how your reference photo is where it has a little green in there, that transition yeah. helps it. It, it really does. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of brown in there to kind of convince our viewer, no, this is real. This is a real thing. We're at the beach. We're at the, we're at the beach. Let's get closer. Just listen. Just look at it. <laughs> okay, that feels better to me. I'm, I can't see what it looks like through the camera, but to me, looks. I think that feels. I think it feels better. Just a little hint of that brown. And I know that it's so scary when you're trying to do something new, and you're just like, "But how much brown?" And you're not telling me exactly where to put the right white. I get that. I totally understand that. But I just want to remind you guys that this is a piece of paper and it is so much better for you guys to explore and to try something and mess up and then learn that lesson for yourself um, and because then you can apply it to the next painting because this is just a piece of paper that's all it is so like I'm not specifically saying here's an outline put this white here and here and here because I want you guys to play with it and Maybe you're like, I don't know how much brown I should be picking up and putting down, but I'm just gonna try it. And if it doesn't turn out, I know that I could just throw this away and do it again. So I'm giving you guys that permission to like not be amazing at this because you don't need to be. Okay, that feels good. Now I'm gonna go in and put in that a little bit darker value on this little, oh, I'm gonna switch to my two to do this. Around two. Just kind of define that wave a little bit more. I love waves. Yeah. I don't love lake water, but I love ocean water. I do too. But I will say that I also am not a strong swimmer. Slash, I can't swim. So I like water but I like only going into water as far as I can stand it's when I go past that point that I'm not having a good time yeah because then I like I'm like one of those panic swimmers where I like move so much more than I need to so I get tired so fast and then after about one minute I'm like okay. I can't but how do you know how much how little you have to move I don't understand how you can tr like tread water I don't either because I can like kick my feet all day long for about 12 seconds tired, <laughs> but like I don't understand how to tread water quote I, unquote properly I think I don't either which is why I freak out and why I like I sink so spend fast. so much energy I have some friends who when they heard I couldn't swim were like we're teaching you how to swim and I was 30 years old and I was at the gym pool and they were there was like five of them all around me and they're like okay this is how you kick your legs and they showed me all the different like strokes, they showed me the different types of treading water, they showed me how to float. I didn't keep doing it, uh -huh. so I learned once. And they clapped, so I did a good job. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But I forgot it all because I stopped swimming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you see with that defined line, it kind of lifts it up a little bit more from the, the paint. The painting like you can tell that it has it's another layer of wave coming in yep I'm gonna do another thing of white on top of it just to find it a little bit more and then for me I like how like smooth this line is that curve I think is probably a little bit too intense um, so I'm gonna blend that out if it will let me and be like, all right, sorry, I made you too strong. Let's soften you. If you want to do it more and more, you can do another layer. Okay. 
Let that dry for a second. Then I'm going to put in. All right. See me blowing on the paper to try and get it to dry faster. I'm like, it's like eating hot oatmeal. Come on. I really want to put the white in, but I know it's not time yet. Okay, um, and then if I want to go in and put more white through here, because I kind of blended it all out. And then I'm even going to take some of my bleed proof white with my bigger brush and just do a couple like passes across the water here because bleed proof white has an opaque quality to it which means it's not transparent which means you can't see through it and so it definitely has a different feel than like watercolor and I don't want it to feel like the white doesn't belong in the painting so I'm going to put a little bit of white kind of throughout it to to give the other parts of this painting an opaque feeling not a lot but just little hints so then it's like that we all belong in the same world you know yes <laughs> okay that feels that feels real good i'm gonna just I'm gonna do a line here and soften that. There we go. Now, gosh, I just, I love all these different colors that are happening on my painting. The very last thing, if you need to do this, is if you want to add a little bit more depth between this first wave and your beach, you're gonna do one more dark value layer. Now, I'm kind of scared to do this because I think that the textures I got right here are so beautiful. I don't want to mess with them that much. So I'm really just going to go in with my two and kind of just like darken some of these areas. And I'm going to blend it a little bit, but not so much that I paint over these gorgeous lines. And your painting might not need this. Your value might have been dark enough on that first run that this isn't totally necessary. But I just kind of want to lift it a little bit more. Does that make it seem like it's sticking out a little bit more? Totally. Yeah. I realize that I've said totally several times in this video. <laughs> That's okay. I need other surf words. You know what? It, nobody knows, really nobody knows the words that come out of their mouth until somebody records. <laughs> That's, That's one true. thing I've learned. <laughs> That's true. If you want to know how many times you laugh or say um or or cackle or cackle or say totally, turns out you you wonder why people listen to your story. <laughs> Been there. Just record yourself talking for an hour and then be like, oh shoot. Oh, I say that a lot. <laughs> okay, I think this little guy. Gosh, those lines, I'm so in love with that. Also, it is totally okay to say that you are in love with some parts of your painting. Yeah. I know some of us are like, well, I don't want to seem like, no, be proud of yourself. You just did something. Yeah. It's okay to be like, I really nailed that section right there. That one, maybe not so much, but this part, <laughs> totally. Okay, so this is our painting, good job. Um, you can do this. Um, in a bunch of different ways, different shorelines. Of course, you guys are really great at making things your own. Don't be afraid to try something. Um, if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. You can tag us on Instagram. Sorry, I didn't think of what I needed next. to say. Next, next thing. Um, Instagram, our hashtag is letsmakeart, or you can tag us in it at letsgomakeart. 
Um, Facebook, we have a wonderful watercolor community. I've actually been seeing some of you guys already doing some beaches. They are beautiful. Um, I, I, love, I love just seeing you guys go. I, I love that we make a project and then like you guys just take off with it, make it your own or try it before even the tutorials are released because you're excited. Like keep doing that. That is what's fun. Follow that passion. Follow, follow what you're excited about. That's just leads to more excitement. So you guys are awesome. Um, that watercolor group is called Let's Make Art Watercolor and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.